only way you can play any of them is on a home video system made by Atari. So you think you're a video game fan? Well, put a quarter up, Arcade Rat. It's the video game years, and this is 1977. 1977 was truly an interesting time to be a gamer. Pro probably. The trends, the culture, the toys, the flicks, the games. A truly remarkable year that gave us these burning questions. What was in the ball pit at Chuck E. Cheese? Just a petri dish of children's crap everywhere. Why was everything wood paneled? My ultimate video game room, it would be just like this wood paneling everywhere. The entire room would be made of wood. How could Red Dots be so realistic? A power sweep. He fights through for the tackle. You pass. He blitzes. Intercepts. This is real competition. Plus the spaceships that made arcades a hit. Pew, pew, pew. And a pew, pew, pew. You know, who wouldn't want to play that? And a leather company makes good. Because you love video games. These are the video game years. And this is 1977. So Pizza Time Theater was created in the late 70s by Nolan Bushnell. And Nolan Bushnell, knowing that he wanted to build up the marketplace for kids and video games, decided, well, it's pizza, animatronic mice, and other creatures, and uh, arcade games. It was a perfect combination. Pizza, video games, tickets, tokens, skee-ball. All in the same place. Everything right there under one roof for the family. Hitting the hitting the, the frog with the rubber mallet? It's possible. An entire economy based around Super Bowls. <laughs> right the arcade games were more difficult there. Try playing Breakout when the arcade stick is all lubed up with pizza grease. One thing I remember about Chuck E. Cheese was that they had the main door for the adult and then they had the little kitty mouse type door right next to it where you get on your knees and, and, and uh, crawl on in. And you always see the fat kid struggling to get into that door. And it was awesome. You just, you know, took some of the pizza grease, you know, lubed them up and then kicked his, his, his keys to right into the door. Or you can lube them up with that fluid that accumulated in the ball pits. Yeah, which was usually piss and spit. Kids, those are not raisinets in the ball pit. Chuck E. Cheese, who'd have thought that? A spokes, spokes being for your, your restaurant, a giant rat. So that rat we all know and love, created by the Atari guy, Bushnell. The, the, the health code violations alone. Nolan Bushnell was a big fan of Disney, which is probably why he paid homage to it by making the restaurant's mascot a giant rat. Can you think of the size of the turds? Are they called turds or are they pellets? With a bunch of banjo playing animals with him. Oh yeah. And uh, I think that would lead to what became the band, which is actually now gone from the current Chuck E. Cheese. Oh, sadly. Some Chuck E. Cheese trivia for everyone. Approximately every 12 minutes, the characters perform original four to five minute cabaret-like presentations drawn from a library of approximately 250 programs. And hang out with your friends while some creepy mice sang terrible songs to you. Whenever, you know, they need maintenance and so the Arms and stuff are falling off. They look like zombie animatronics. People were more easily amused then. This is the decade that gave us the pet rock. Arcades were kind of seedy and gross and... Mullet wearing thugs. I'm very, very glad that they decided to uh, give children a place to actually play arcades that didn't involve possibly being molested. Dorks were mean in the yeah. 70s. They're all lining up, greasy faced. They were associated with criminals and punks and teenagers. Rampant drug use and sex and alcohol and... Cocaine, motorcycle <laughs> gangs, cigarette burns. That's what arcades were then. Press start. You're watching the most exciting game you will ever see on your TV set. Telstar by Coleco, with three different games. Telstar Tennis, with digital scoring, variable speeds. Telstar Hockey, 
Each player controls a goalie plus a forward on the other side. Oops, a goal. The original Pong. This came out in 75. So between 75 and 77, a whole mess of Pong clones started coming out. And suddenly everybody wanted to put out a dedicated console to a game. You would buy a system, plunk down so much money, like, like actually quite a bit of money, $100, $200, uh, and more likely than not, you were getting a Pong clone. Oh, wow. Pong systems in the late 70s. You get so many different kinds. Christ. They were the same game with different names, okay? Same game, same concept, different names. But they were all Pong. You know, it's a theater of the mind. Some popular variations include hockey, handball, tennis, and my personal favorite, AP Debate Club College Edition. Oh, that's a valid point. Well, allow me to retort. And by this point, I think by 77, they're really squeezing blood from a stone with these Pong systems. And they, you know, there were the light gun games that were, um, weak. Yeah, hey kids, you wanna get shot by a cop? And the controllers were usually attached to the system, so they didn't have standalone controllers. All of them, all these dedicated consoles had these, what the hell? This. Oh, this was revolutionary, this is my a friends. controller, guys. Oh, yeah. Now you kind of see why drugs were so prevalent, I think. Well, 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 well. I'm sticking by that. See, I feel like these Pong consoles were just as much like a fashion statement as they were a preference in game. Because you could get the hot orange, or you could go for something a little bit more subdued. A little more wood grain. A little bit of wood grain. Yes, because everything was wood grain back in the 70s. Because when you think high quality electronics, you think it must be made of wood. <laughs> and you gotta love the, the wood grain on these things, man. All the consoles. I love the consoles of the 70s with so the wood 70s, grain. It? It's so slick and so nice. To match their wood grain walls, their wood grain tables. The wood colored television. Yes, because everybody wanted their, their house to look like a forest. You had, let's see, Odyssey was a big uh, company. You had APF, had a lot, and Coleco had a ton of them. Coleco introduced a dedicated game console known as the Telstar. A game you play yourself. <laughs> Telstar handball, tennis, hockey. All three at an exciting low price. For great family fun, hitch your TV to a Telstar <laughs> by Coleco. Now, funny thing about Coleco, the actual name stands for Connecticut leather company. That's right, back in the 50s when Coleco started, they basically manufactured shoe leather and then they went on to do like pool molding and plastics for swimming pools. Them getting into video games is really just a matter of natural progression. And later known for the Cabbage Patch Kids, little known fact. Yes. Atari, naturally, uh, was, was pushing the pack, even with its dedicated consoles. Uh, it was coming up with, um, you know, alternatives to Pong, like honest to God alternatives. This was a cool one. Look at this camera. The Room. The stunt cycle by Atari. Rubber grips. This is all you did. You go faster or slower. Faster, slower, very complex. No, 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 that's not all what, you did. What? Look, you could be a stunt cyclist oh. or a drag racer, or you could do some motocross or enduro, which I don't think is actually a thing, but I see that <laughs> word on a lot of 70s, you know, games. Yeah, kind of a depressing time. And now, Pat Contry presents the pop culture of 1977. Pat Contry here with the pop culture that inspired video games in 1977. The Amazing Spider-Man! Not so amazing. The Super Friends cartoon still going strong. This year, we met the Wonder Twins. Yeah. I'm Ron Howard. This is Grand Theft Auto. And Grand Theft Auto directed by Ron Howard. A movie where the hero beats up prostitutes and all women for their pocket change. Or not. Grand Theft Auto is a love story with cars. And those were the pop culture moments of 1977 that inspired video games. Remember, there's other things in the world besides video games. They're just less important. When the video game years returns. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, the RCA Studio 2. Well, they, they thought it would sell really well because of the public's clamoring for only black and white. 
arguably the greatest movie which started the greatest franchise of all time, and that would be Star Trek. I love Star Wars. <laughs>